Russian Secretary General urges warring parties to avoid violence and renew the truce. Fighting breaks out across Yemen after Houthi rejected to extend the truce. Save the Children organization expresses concern as the ceasefire failed to be extended. Welcome to Yemen Today TV. This is English News with me, Shazad Delbey. The United Nations chief has urged Yemen's warring parties to avoid violence and engage in talks to renew the truce. Sources reported that Hans Grunberg is holding further discussions in Amman, which aims to reach an agreement on extending the truce. This report has more details. UN Secretary General urged Yemen's warring parties on Monday to refrain from any provocations that could escalate violence. The move follows the failure to extend the nationwide ceasefire and to engage with each other to renew the truce. UN spokesman said the Secretary General is disappointed that the Yemeni government and Houthi rebels didn't reach an agreement before the 2nd of October deadline, but he stressed that they in no way see it as the end of the road. The failure to renew the truce for an even longer period, as the UN sought has raised fears of renewed clashes and a worsening of the already dire humanitarian situation in the Arab world's poorest country. The UN spokesman said UN Special Envoy Hans Grunberg is still in negotiations with the government and the Houthis and will continue to explore options that are acceptable to both parties. Last week, the UN Secretary General urged both sides to prioritize the national interests of the Yemeni people, expand the truce, and choose peace for good. His statement followed a stark warning three days earlier from UN envoy Grunberg that the risk of a return to fighting is real. The truce has directly benefited Yemeni civilians, and casualties have dropped significantly. Fuel imports through Hodeida force ease shortage and international commercial flights out of Sana'a airport to Amman and other destinations have resumed. The UN spokesman said there is still time for the parties to do what they need to do to benefit the people of Yemen. The U.S. stated deep concern about the failure of Yemen's warring parties to extend the truce. The U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price said the U.S. welcomed the Yemeni government's support for the extended truce proposal submitted by the United Nations. The spokesperson said that the U.S. does not accept the Houthi militia's actions that endanger commercial shipping and oil companies operating in the region, adding that the truce is the best chance that Yemenis had in years. The European Union described Houthi rejection of the truce as a planned mistake. The EU expressed disappointment at the Houthi position, which clashes with the aspirations and needs of the Yemenis. The EU called on the Houthi militia to demonstrate real commitment to peace, ease their demands and engage with the UN Special Envoy. The government forces announced that five of their members were killed and 34 were injured due to Houthi violations. The violations covered 11 days on the fronts of Hudayda, Taz al dala Hajja, Sa'da al jawf and Ma'rib. Violations included between infiltration, shooting, artillery, snipers and drones. Fighting resumed on more than one front in Yemen, hours after the truce ended. The truce ended in the 2nd of October, after the Houthis rejected the UN envoy's proposals to extend the truce in the country. This report has more details. Once the United Nations mediated truce ended and all parties failed to broker a third extension, the Houthi rebels seized the opportunity to destabilize the Yemeni scene once again. The rebels escalated their attacks in different fronts in an evident indicator of their refusal to peace. The Houthis attacked government forces' positions in the hotspot of Marib in Balak. Elements of the Houthis tried twice to infiltrate the government forces' positions by advancing into al Balak fronts and al Qaid area. The Houthi attempts, however, ended in failure and they sustained heavy losses both in human and equipment. In the same context, the government forces' artillery destroyed several militia positions where heavy machine guns were stationed. 
At the same time, other Houthi fighters launched attacks on government forces in Qassara, Raghwal and Mass west of Marib. The fiercest battles took place in Al-Fakhir area of Adalai Governorate, where the Houthis targeted government forces with mortar rounds, tank shells and drones, for it was explosives. There were also sporadic exchanges of heavy machine gun fire between government forces and the Houthis outside the besieged city of Taz. The United Nations Special Envoy for Yemen, Hans Grunberg, said on Sunday that the United Nations Broker Truce, which went into effect on April 2 and was renewed twice, would not be renewed a third time. He thanked the Yemeni government for positively cooperating with his proposals to end the war. بينات شارع بعين قاعد تناشق على على أسرتي مع باقي اللي أنا صرف عليهم كل شيء أنا اسمي أنا رصيد سيف عمري 12 سنة أنا أشتغل بورشة حديد من الساعة سبعة إلى الساعة ست أحيانا سريع أحيانا قوس أحيانا رنق أحيانا نقش أي حاجة أنا أعمل لا الساعة لما الساعة سيف أوقف أنا وقفت الدراسة علشان ما فيش أحد يرد يشق على أسرتي أدرس أخواني في الباقي منهم أربعة وأنا الخامس أحلم إني أفتح ورشة أبي وأشق على أسرتي وأندي لهم مصاري وأدرس أخواتي لآخر الجامعات وأطبخ وأي شيء Save the Children organization raised concerns about the failure of the warring parties to extend the truce. According to the organization, the truce gave Yemenis benefits in terms of reduction of civilian casualties and humanitarian aid. This report has more details. After achieving the longest period of relative peace since conflict erupted in Yemen in 2015, Yemen's warring parties failed to renew a UN-led peace agreement, and in doing so, Yemen is threatened to be pushed into a new spiral of violence. During the six months of the truce, child casualties decreased by 34%. The Child Rights Agency stated that the gains achieved over the past six months, including the significant drop in the number of civilian and child casualties, the reduction in displacement and a considerable lift of restrictions on civilian travel and commercial imports will all be jeopardized without serious efforts to resume a comprehensive dialogue that aims at reaching a peaceful resolution to the conflict. The violent conflict in Yemen has caused hundreds of thousands of deaths since it started in March 2015, crippling infrastructure and pushing over 80% of the population under the poverty line. Any renewal of violence will compound an already severe humanitarian situation and may further fuel the aggravation of human and child rights violations, which is very concerning. According to Save the Children's Deputy Country Director for Yemen, the past six months have allowed children to have a glimpse of what life could be like if there were no war. To go to school and play outside without fear of bombs falling from the sky. To have the ability to move back to their hometowns or even to travel abroad to meet relatives, study or seek medical care. It is extremely disappointing to watch the country falling off the path towards a peaceful end to the conflict. Children of Yemen have already paid the biggest price in this war and lost some of the most precious years of their lives. Their childhood was compromised and their future still remains uncertain. Parties to the conflict owe Yemeni children a future that is free from violence and fear, and they must take all that in their power to ensure what happened throughout the past years is never repeated. Now it's time for the parties to the conflict to move the country forward on its path towards peace and prosperity. They have the power to alleviate the suffering of the millions of exhausted children, men and women, and finally bring this grim episode of their lives to an end and to allow hope to prevail. 
Two soldiers were killed and five others were injured in Shabwa due to an explosive device. In a statement, the Ministry of Interior said that an explosive device exploded while oil tankers were passing through the governorate. It pointed out that the terrorist attacks sought to destabilize security and stability and emphasized that members of the armed forces will continue to fight terrorism. A violent explosion was heard this morning in the Yemeni capital, Sana'a. In addition, a local source said the explosion resounded in the north neighborhoods of the capital as clouds of smoke were in the area. Sources said the explosion is likely to be a missile that the Houthi Musha failed to launch. Coming next in the news. In Hudayda, Tihami celebrates Yemeni's glorious revolutions. Welcome back. Chairman of the Presidential Leadership Council received the Ambassador of the United Arab Emirates. The Chairman of the Presidential Leadership Council praised the UAE's active role in the framework of the coalition to support legitimacy and its development and humanitarian interventions to ease the suffering of the Yemeni people. The meeting discussed the latest developments to bring peace and stability. The Alliance of Political Parties Youth in Taiz organized a conference entitled September and Democracy. They discussed the September 26th revolution. The symposium today discussed democracy and youth and democracy at the time of war. It discussed also my own paper on democracy and the September revolution. Did the revolution have an ambition for democracy? Actually, from a theoretical point of view, the September Revolution had an ambition for democracy. It had a vision for democratic transition. The declaration of the Republic is an evidence for this democratic vision. In Hudayda, Tehami Festival was organized to celebrate the September and October Revolutions. This report has more details. An artistic and sports activities were presented by Al Khawkha at the Hudayda Carnival, which lasted for two days to celebrate the Yemeni Revolution Feast a festival through which the participants embody the spirit of the national revolution and the Tihami originality, which is part of the Yemeni identity. Camel race is the most prominent feature of the carnival, which was held in Abu Zahr tourist area. These activities are representations of Tihama's courage and strength. Azranic tribes are also well known for the inheritance and they are the people who created these activities. In the festival square, the dance troops also presented an interesting show with many Tihami dances, such as Al Haqfa, Al Tasayuf, and Tabrish, which are popular dances that are distinguished by the Tihami and Zaranik tribe in particular. All the Tihama people are conveying a message to the Imamate by saying there's no way for that return among them. Every single dance here has a history and because they're combative dances. And now the Tihamis inherited me, which dates back to ancient times. The events also included a three kilometer running race and a marathon for modern and old boat races, in which more than 30 fishermen participated in a celebration to express the struggle of the people in Tihama and their love for the land and sea. <laughs> We are here in Al Khawkha, which represents the fishermen's gathering point from the Mandab Strait to Saudi Arabia. Tihama, land and the people are all about sea and agriculture. These are the most prominent activities of the festival, and it is an image that the people of Tihama are accustomed to on national occasions and the glorious feasts of the eternal Yemeni revolution. 
The Yemeni government stated the arrival of more than 1,000 metric tons of oil derivatives to the port of Hodeida in the past six months. A government official said that the tax and customs revenues of this amount are sufficient to pay the salaries of civil servants in the areas under the control of the Houthi militia. The Houthi Musha approved a new rise in the prices of domestic gas. This comes at a time when the capital Sana'a and other areas under the control of the Houthi militia are facing repeated and made-up crises in domestic gas and the spread of the black market. Children continue to bear the brunt of armed conflicts and Yemen is no exception. Yet community initiatives are trying to help children. This report has more details. Poverty and poor living conditions are among the most prominent consequences of the war. And the absence of state institutions put children and adults in to drop out of school and resorted to joining armed groups as well as forcing girls into early marriage. Such a catastrophic situation prompted those interested in this category to invest the energies of young people in areas that absorb their abilities and provide them with craft, professional and life skills that prevent them from being forced to surrender to the consequences of the bitter reality of the war. We are providing the children with many skills, starting from life skills to psychological and health support sessions led by psychiatrists and health professionals to economic empowerment through vocational training in technical education organizations on four basic professions, conditioning and electrical connections for boys, sewing and hairdressing for girls. After that, the trainees are directed to practical application in the labor market and technicians' workshops, providing them with the needed tools. The solutions offered by this project to overcome the country's conditions were tangible and contributed to the graduation of effective craftsmen who are really needed by the labor market. The field of technical education is the only field that helps to combat poverty. And for the Ministry of Technical Education, the state and the society in general, it is an investment in individuals. These young people that you see in front of you, whatever you spent on them is an investment that is going to return its benefits to them in the future. Before I joined this project, I didn't have any skill or profession, especially after I dropped out of school. But now I joined this project and I had a three-month training and I gained a new skill and a lot of experience that I can use to find a job and improve my living situation. I also think about going back to school and continue my education. Today, these young people have become owners of professions and trades facing difficult life conditions and they have have become practical models capable of securing their future away from the dangers of war. Here's a reminder of the main headlines. The United Nations Secretary General urges warring parties to avoid violence and renew the truce. Fighting breaks out across Yemen after Houthi rejected to extend the truce. Save the Children organization expresses concern as the ceasefire failed to be extended. This is the end of the news. Thank you for watching.